You ever heard of Remember the Titans? Have you ever heard of Uno? No. We had a big movie disagreement over this. You've either never seen never it. Never seen it. Never seen it all the way through. I've seen parts of it. Amazing soundtrack. Oh, the music on it yeah. is... It, it almost makes me want to cry. It gets I me so pumped up. Love the movie. It's a great movie. And I've uh, heard it's fantastic. I've just never sat down and watched the whole thing. I do love... That I guess this is what we're doing now is is the top athletes is saying like, well, have you ever heard of Uno, like LeBron, or have you ever heard of Remember the Titans, like Micah? That is going to be my new default as any sort of analogy I make or any sort of retort. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reference a movie. Like, well, have you ever seen Scarface? <laughs> yeah, that, that should like tell you Peyton. something. You know what Veal is? Yeah, I'm not sure if you're <laughs> What a uh, calf. What a performance <laughs> from Micah Parsons yesterday. Not on the field, but at his locker. Uh, Micah Parsons yesterday appeared at mandatory minicamp and they wanted to know right away, Micah, what's the thought process behind you skipping these voluntary workouts? I mean, I think that's always been kind of my style. Uh, I think I really haven't been here since like what my rookie season. So I don't think it's anything new. I think I always had like my own way of doing things. Um, and you know, defense is defense. You know, I'm pretty much caught up on everything. I went over it. Paul was meeting up with me, um, the run game coordinator. So I really wasn't missing anything. So I feel like I was just getting better, getting stronger, getting uh, faster, you know, just doing my things and what I, what Mike does in the off season, wrestle sumos. So I just have fun. I was one of two third person references yesterday. I believe those are the first two I've ever heard him make <sighs> at his locker. Ugh. So look, we're getting a different Micah this year. No no more lion talk. He's just Micah Jordan, apparently. Exactly. That's what he like is. It. And he is and he would uh, love to hear that. Oh gosh. He absolutely would. although I don't know. He he seems like the type would then want to sit down with you and fight about like, actually, you know, Sean Kemp was always better than Michael Jordan and make some like oh, ridiculous argument where he wants to really dig in on. Uh okay, so Micah, but you were supposed to be the leader this offseason. All right. How how are you supposed to bond with your teammates if you're not out here? Well, I would say you ever watch Remember the Titans? We're going to be in Oxnard a very, very long time. There's going to be a lot of chemistry in that building. And I think that's really the time where you see everything. Like, it's hard to really teach someone without pads or true contact or hand points. Like, it's just not realistic. We can't even touch each other. We're going to lose a draft pick or something like that. Like, it's just, it's, it's outrageous. It's not even really, uh, I think right now it's just more technique. It's a lot of walkthroughs right now. Nothing to anything. So for my position where I'm at, it's a lot of individual, and I could be doing a lot of individual by myself or with my trainer. Allow, allow me to reach. And I mean, really reach here. Touching yourself and getting fined by the NFL? <clears throat> Possible. I think that's what he said. Nick. It was. <laughs> um, if if you're if you're if Micah considers himself a leader slash mentor, mm -hmm. is what he's doing not mentoring young players? into keeping and making your putting your money first you know what that is a reach you're right <laughs> um, no he's not teaching them that at all because if anything he's teaching them to T you first team second That's no he's no teaching he's teaching them pretext is what he's teaching them is to say it's something else other than it actually is if it's money say it's money dude yeah like just be upfront about it don't tell me it's well this is like you know this is what's best for me and i am you know when you think about it i am being a leader still uh in the way that i'm doing things and and look yeah. we'll be out there just like remember the titans and hanging out for 25 days and it'll be a long camp and brian brought something up yesterday that i thought was kind of interesting what's brought, what's brought us his attitude towards micah i mean he thinks he's fantastic but obviously it's like there's there times where stuff not trouble him but yeah, no, Bobby, he, stop being such a wuss. Does he thinks? <laughs> does he think that some of this is stuff? No, I think he thinks it's. Yeah, I think I think he thinks it's. There are there are legitimate questions about the type of leader, quote unquote, that he is or isn't. Uh, but I mean, he mentions there that Brian had said yesterday. I think what we're learning about Mike, the more he talks about things, is he just doesn't like the classroom work. He likes to mm. he likes to work in the team periods. He likes doing the stuff when the pads come on. But if it's the teaching and the instruction OTA stuff, he's like, well, what am I going to learn there? Weren't he, there questions about him or whispers about missed assignments last year? Yes. Like, is he perfect in the classroom? I assume Peyton Manning is going to be perfect in the classroom. I, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to take this approach, you better be acing all the tests on paper. I the, think there were busts last year that 
he was responsible for, where it was his missed assignment. Now, you could ask, is this a missed assignment that you did not know where you were supposed to be? Or did you decide you didn't want to be there and you instead wanted to do something else on the play? You wanted to, to rush or you wanted to pursue the ball. And it's not necessarily that you didn't know. It's that you said, nah, I think I can get there. And that's what I'm going to do. And you left something exposed. That's a question. It, it may not be an issue of classwork. It may be an issue of ego that just says I can get there. And And I mean, look, you want some level of ego with a player like that. So it, it absolutely could be a factor in it. Uh, Micah Parsons, though, says team bonding goes beyond the locker room. I mean, you don't just build relationship in the locker room. I mean, me and Chauncey just went to Columbia together. And Sam was there, too. I mean, I don't think a locker room is the only way I build chemistry with my teammates. Now you're talking about rookies. I mean, I come in here and I sit in a cub tub and I talk to some of the rookies. Like, just because I'm actively not here at the designated time doesn't mean I don't come in. We mention his name and he appears on the DNM leasing hotline. The great Brian brought us calling in from the G bag nation. Brian, thank you for calling in. What are your thoughts on all this? Yeah, I don't think it's a good thing. Uh, you know, and, and you asked the question of what I think about you know, with Micah. I think there were things that you heard. There's things that I've heard. I talked about this even during the season. There were things, you know, it's not Jerry and Steven talking about Micah Parsons. It's, yeah. You know, it's people within the organization, it's teammates, it's coaches, it's, you know, staff. There's a lot of things that are, you know, being talked about. And, you know, it's just not one or two people. It's several people. And, you know, and what Bobby, you know, mentioned, and I said this yesterday, I just don't think Micah Parsons likes the classroom aspect of football. I really don't. And if you listen to other coaches talk about Micah, Micah has a hard time staying in classrooms. Like, he'll go and meet with the running backs or he'll go sit with the wide receivers. He just doesn't like to be in that environment. And this is what OTAs and mini camps are. Yeah. It's, he's right. It's not really on-field work. Yeah, you're learning how to line up and do things like that. But he, he really, I believe he loves playing football. He hates the classroom aspect of it. And that's why he chooses not to be a part of it at these OTAs. But, Brian, Mike Florio, you've been around a lot of great players. And Mike Florio said this, and he just texted me. He's more than good enough to be any type of pain in the rear end. You shut up and you deal with it. It comes with the yeah. territory with many great players. Right. What do you say to that, right. being around you yeah. know, Hall of Famers with different organizations no. yourself? Yeah, you're absolutely right. You, you do uh, – you know, Jimmy Johnson did the same thing. And, you know, players will tell you that star players are treated differently than you're just your player 45 through 53, yeah. you know. So, yeah, you have to be very, very careful of how you deal with star players because you don't want to be the one that runs a star player off. I always wondered, you know, who was talking to Luka Doncic, you know. Is that a Jason Kidd thing? I mean, what got him turned around? Nico Harrison? Who got him turned around? You know, somebody somebody had to step across that line to, you know, get Luca to kind of buy into some things that they needed. And it is. It's a very difficult thing. You do not want to be the guy or the gal that pisses off the star player. Then all of a sudden you're dealing with that in your organization. Broadus, the quarterback obviously has to – probably has to love the classroom. Are there positions where you can get away with not wanting to do the classroom work? You know, at the, when you look at the position that that Mark, uh, Mike plays, as a rush end, that's God-given talent. That's bend, that's quickness, that is explosiveness. Yeah, it's all stuff you can work on. But, you know, for him to be an all-fall linebacker, He's got to learn coverages. Mm -hmm. He's got to learn fits. He's got to learn what the secondary's doing. You know, those are things that Micah Parsons, as an edge rusher and one of the best edge rushers in the National Football League, that's mom and dad. You know, everything else on the defense, you're having to learn. So he gets away with that because of that position. But you're absolutely right. You can't be a part-time quarterback and be good in this league. You know, you can't be... Uh, last in, first out guy. You know, and it just shows, you know, the dedication that quarterbacks have to have, you know, to, to learn their craft. I think free safety is another position. You know, you have to know 
what everybody in front of you is doing. You know, that's important. But he gets away with it because he's one of the best edge rushers in the National Football League. Brian brought us here on the fan with a surprise call in during Below the Belt. You know Mike Zimmer pretty well. I would ask Real you, well. yeah, well. could yeah. you could you venture a guess as to what Mike Zimmer is thinking when he hears Micah say, hey, look, um, there's some things that he likes and some things that I like, and uh, he's not going to compromise, and I'm not going to compromise. What do you think? What do you think Mike Zimmer's thoughts on this are? You know, I think that Mike, and I get a chance to visit with him before practice yesterday, and, you know, just to say hello again, and, you know, we've, We've talked several times before he got this job. But, you know, Mike, is, Mike understands Mike is a really a button-up guy. And the thing with Mike is, and I've said this before, Mike is not going to play you if you don't know what you're doing. And so, you know, he's Mike's a teacher. Uh, you know, he doesn't want to hear that all schemes are the same. There's things that, that Mike does that are completely different than uh, than what uh, Dan, Quinn. Dan Quinn was doing. Yeah. yeah. And so with all that being said, you know, they've got to figure some things out. I mean, that's why you have the majority of your defenders you know, out there trying to learn what's going on right now, even though it's no TA practice. You know, Mike understands star players. He, I mean, he's best friends with one of the greatest to ever play when you look at Deion Sanders. So, you know, it, it, it is you know, it's important for Mike – for you to know what's going on out there. That that is super, super important to him. Thank you, brother. Fantastic surprise. We appreciate the uh, info as always. Yeah, check us out 2 to 7 today. Krusty's Corner at 240. <laughs> have a report from uh, OTA practice on my way right now. We'll see you there. What a beast. Oh, 240 from OTAs. Brian brought us on the DNM Leasing Hotline and one half of the Love of the Star podcast. 